in today's video, we are going to discuss Chelsea versus Liverpool and why I just want to talk about this game because I just think that there's a massive misconception already about how Chelsea performed in this game. I'm seeing people almost act as if we didn't play well, um, that Liverpool were far better, and I just completely disagree. And I've, I've got this up on screen to begin with because... Let's just, I just want to get this out of the way early doors. Um, if their penalty, the one that was given, is a penalty, for me, this is just as much as, of one. I think they'd both be penalties, in my opinion. I think there is contact, and you can see both of them. There is clear contact, and they've clearly made an effort to play the ball and missed both times. Same with Cole, same with Trent. And they'd both be penalties. This one does come first, so that's another factor. But even with this, and even with like the way of the game and with the penalty decisions and some of the decisions in that first half, I still think Chelsea did enough to at least get a point. And we're going to go into detail as to why. So, these are the two games from the last two seasons at Anfield for Chelsea. This one on the left being yesterday. The one on the right being from last season when Chelsea lost 4-1 at Anfield. Straight away... Chelsea, obviously, the blue. Yesterday, 88.1% completed passes, which, again, I think was an Anfield record in the last however long, for quite a while, um, for, to have that completion rate of passes. 57.3% possession held the fair line share of the ball. And it wasn't just pointless, because we also dominated the territory phase. Yes, it wasn't as big of a gap as the year before that Liverpool had over Chelsea, but... The fact that Chelsea had that sort of field tilt and territory shows that it wasn't just needless, pointless possession in their own half. They were building up through the lines and they were holding territory in the Liverpool half as well. And we were pinning them in quite a few phases of the game where we actually managed to pin them back, very largely due to the likes of Casado, Lavia and having Gusto, like these athletes around the ball. We spoke about this in the first game of the season against Manchester City and how that worked really well. And that's one thing that you do get when Enzo doesn't play as much as I rate Enzo, as much as I like Enzo. What you do get with Lavia and Casado is you get a little bit more sustained pressure in terms of winning those second balls. But even here, 16 chances we gave up at Anfield last season. They had, where's the, two big chances created. And I don't think I've got the shots on screen here, but it was around 28 shots they had last season compared to, I think it was eight they had yesterday. Massive, massive difference. And it's because of how Chelsea forced them to play. And before we get into like the images, which we're about to get into, this is the last little sort of data plot that I wanted to use. And it's the, the momentum of the game, right? And Chelsea had the better of the game up until around here. Yes, there was like tiny little sort of bursts from Liverpool, but Chelsea were the better side. Then little burst before their goal and they get the penalty. OK, fair enough. Then we fight back, could have had our own goal. Then a little bit back and forth before the half ends. OK. 1-0, even at that point, I'm still confident. We come out, score straight away with this lovely bit of pressure here. They score, and then again, all Chelsea pretty much. Again, tiny little burst from Liverpool, and that was from their sort of long ball threat, little transitions, uh, which we're going to speak about, because they did have threat on the on the break, and they did have threat isolating their wingers against the fullbacks. But I think this shows you that Chelsea did have a massive control factor in this game at Anfield, and... That's enough of the data plots because everybody's already seen these, but I just wanted to use them ready to back up what we're about to speak about, which is how Chelsea did it. And again, at the preview that I did the other day, it pretty much gave the same blueprint idea. And Maresca clearly highlighted this, right? That the the way of getting at this Liverpool team who press with this front four and then their pivot was to play with that 3-2 that we usually do. And to try and find that middle pivot, especially Casado, who can find himself between Jota, and this was later Nunes, uh, and it was Curtis Jones, who was, again, he's been dragged around by Cole Palmer very often, which we're going to get into. So straight away in this game, right, 10 seconds apart, that's where the pivot is, within the soft spot, we're going to call it, of that Liverpool hexagon formed by the front four and the two pivot. 10 seconds on where they're manoeuvring the ball. Reese doesn't opt to play this pass, but where Palmer has dragged wide, Jones has come already over here, right? Gravenberch has dropped off, so this is a massive drift between these two already. If that ball goes into from James into 
Casado, Chelsea are away. And they're now attacking the back five of Liverpool, the, the back four and Gravenberg here. And this is only with six players. So Chelsea have four in the opposition are half. Two wingers. Um, it would be Gusto in and around here and Jackson, right? Because Palmer's in here. So instantly you can see where the gaps were against this Liverpool side. And Chelsea did this on very on a quite a few occasions, right? Of playing into these areas. And this was clearly the game plan to slow it down at the back, draw that front four, and then find the gap when you create this drift between these two players. And when Chelsea did that, they created chances. And we're going to come back to that in a minute because the next image that we have is basically just talking about the press as well because I think the press was very good. Chelsea forced them backwards and they forced them long. The idea clearly in this game was to go man-to-man in these areas of the pitch, as you can see here, and force that ball into these areas, into the wide men, okay? Long passes from the goalkeeper or even one of the centre-backs, if it was Van Dijk, Canate getting on the ball. And then for Gusto and Reese in the first half, um, and then obviously Vega in the second half, to deal with those passes into the channel, because if you're going to go man-to-man in this area of the pitch, of course you are also man-to-man in this area of the pitch, a bit deeper off-screen. Again, this shows you 10 seconds later, they're pushing. They're, it, this isn't as aggressive. Like, this is in not a mid-block, but a semi, sort of, it's not an aggressive, full-on man-to-man press in their half, really intense. Until it goes backwards, and then again, you lock off one side of the pitch. You make sure you're man-to-man. This is Tosin, pushing up into this area. And this happened with Colwell, this happened with everybody. Lavia and Casado, they're man-to-man. They're not going to let them turn. Madueke, Sancho. And I think the press to force Liverpool long worked really well. And it does have to be said, Liverpool knew, Liverpool didn't want to get caught in these areas, right? So obviously that was their decision to then go long. Chelsea wanted them to go long, but Liverpool also played, They Slot had the right idea, trying to sort of isolate the winger, get that ball and then sort of knock it back into the sort of Trent and Curtis Jones sort of zones. And that was their way of sort of bypassing the press with very little... Error, chance for error. And I do think that was clever from Klopp, uh, from Slot. I don't know if I said Klopp before, but I meant Slot. Uh, and by no means am I saying that Liverpool didn't have some good tactical elements in their game to sort of get around what Chelsea were trying to do. But I just think Maresca set this game up really perfectly. And I think, if anything, you can point to individual errors and to some individual performances. The likes of Sancho's first half performance could have been far better. Could have won a penalty. Could have had a few better moments when he was isolated out wide. Palmer, one of his worst games for Chelsea. But again, you, um, uh, it's not really me moaning about it because Palmer is, he, if anybody deserves an off day, it's him, right? So let's get that out of the way. We're not saying Palmer was so poor that it needs to be spoke about more. Again, this is the sort of off-ball shape that we're talking about. Not so aggressive. They are allowing them to have the ball in these areas. But the idea is don't let them play through you into the middle at all. And if they do, that's when you go man to man. So if it hits one of these men, these guys are ready to jump. And that was the difference between Chelsea's sort of hexagon in here and Liverpool's. When that ball hit into these men, Lavia and Casado were there straight away. The, the distances between these two and these two was never as far as, say, Liverpool's were with Gravenberg when McAllister come on with Jones. Chelsea were able to sort of manipulate that far better than Liverpool were, in my opinion, during these phases of the game. Again, you can see that man to man press. Like I said, it's going to force it long. And again, this is Colwell this time. Uh, no, this I think this might be... I can't really... That might be James or Tossin, but I, I can't remember. Um, I've had a long day, so we're going to ignore that. It won't be Colwell because Colwell will be over this side of the pitch. But this is one area of the pitch that I want to speak about. And I think this is something that Liverpool... This is where I'm going to give them praise, right? Because I think Curtis Jones was excellent. But I don't even think it's just his individual quality in this game that shone. I think it was the sort of the nuance and the instruction for him to come and receive that ball out wide where he was dragging one of the players out with him a lot of the time. So say it was Casado or Lavia, like I said, they're going to go man to man in these areas of the pitch. They're not there on this occasion, but when one of them comes to put pressure on them, because Madueke is here, he's pressuring this man on the ball. It's going to end up, is it here? No, it's not here. But Casado and Lavia, it'll usually be Casado, because you can see Lavia's here. 
would then come over to cover this area of the pitch because Madwek is out of position. And then you've got, again, they've created that drift in between the two pivot players and they've got space to attack. Again, man-to-man press. See Lavia pointing him on. Colwell is going to step into here. Casado doing it too. This is the sort of leadership in the press that you need, that they need to know their roles. Everybody else knows what they're going to do. Palmer is here to either press one of these two and lock off one side of the pitch. Lavi is ready to jump if that ball comes in past Jackson. Again, wingers to fullback. And so that Lavia can press onto him, they're both instructed Colwell ready to step up as he does when that ball does come through. And Colwell was very good at that as well. He had he has his he had his moments in this game. Uh, the penalty. You can see he was puffing at one point from that penalty uh, from when he gave that penalty away. And it's because he was having to put in the hard yards in here, but he did it really well, in my opinion, in terms of being aggressive. And that's something that we missed as well with Wesley Fafana, because he's brilliant at that. Again, this is sort of, we're talking about that ability to break down this four here. We've got the pivot, we've got the three. Then these two, the Liverpool's pivot, they can't get too close and go man to man here, because otherwise you've got Palmer and Gusto, who can receive the ball in acres of space. And it's, it's leaving these defenders where they can get dragged out. And Liverpool don't want these defenders to be dragged out because then Jackson getting behind. That's that's what they're trying to avoid. Which is why you've got these players sort of dual marking in between both. And the re- the reason that Casado was able to get so much joy, and I highlighted this before the game, usually it was McAllister and Gravenberg, is they were often, and again, even more so because it was Palmer, is Jones was following him and he was attaching himself to him. So if Palmer came out here, Jones would sort of be manipulated away from that area. And there were so many times where Casado was able to get the ball through one of these passing gates into him and he could face forward and play. And this happens here perfectly, right? Jones, he knows he's got to stay with Palmer, but he's shouting at one of these two to cut that pass off because Casado, look at the space he's in. Lavia's sort of, he's with Gravenberg, so Gravenberg can't come over. Jackson's doing a good job at pinning Canate so that he can't over jump into the middle and allow uh, Jones or somebody to, to push up. Again, you've got the width. Everything in this sort of play is perfectly showing what Chelsea were trying to exploit. That ball into the middle. Can he turn? Yes, he could. Okay. And he was able to create. He was able to dribble through this area of the pitch, get it out wide, and we generated an attack from it. Again, man-to-man press. These two pushing up nice and high. They're squeezing on these two. And again, we can see here that we spoke about earlier with the Jones position. Shobosly is actually the one dropping in here. And now it's Jones who is sort of unaccounted for. And he was really good at receiving in these areas, either pulling Reese out with him here or becoming the, the plus one for Liverpool and receiving the ball. So they did that well. And uh, I think that little switch towards sort of around here, really, like the 20th, 25th minute onwards, they were really finding those positions for Jones. Another example, this time, I don't think Reese plays this ball. No, he does. He does play this ball. So again, Jones being dragged out by Palmer. Reese got the passing gate. He's going to fizz it in there and be brave. And that's what we needed at times. I think Tossin at times in that first half wasn't brave enough. Uh, I thought Badia Shiel when he came on in the second half was really good, by the way. Uh, again, not just for these sort of reasons, but just defensively and sort of in the counter press and being aggressive and stepping up and winning the duels in around the halfway line to sustain pressure. But yeah, this ball into Casado, again, so on. He's playing in that cover shadow here. Neither of these pivot players can get to him. He's going to turn grab the ball, and then he's going to put that ball into Jackson, which ends up being a very close chance. Again, I put a little bit of curve there. It was more of a straight pass. But but it's these moments that Chelsea were trying to generate artificially. This was the game plan. This wasn't by chance. This isn't just Chelsea creating the odd chance uh, through these moments because that's just where they came from. Like this was The, the game plan was clear, and I, I said it out. Bef- I told you guys this before the game was played I said that this was going to happen and this is where Liverpool they're able to be hit like as good a side as Liverpool look this year they can be exploited and this is the reason in my opinion I think this is the most exploitable factor of this Liverpool side under slot again this time Lavia is going to actually make a movement inside Gravenberg is going to follow again you got this drift you got him with Palmer if anything now this time it's going to go into Gusto okay Straight through here. Again, brave pass from Reese. That's what you needed in this game because you know where the space is going to be. And we did this time and time again, finding that breaking line pass into whichever one of these men was free in this sort of box because you were always going to find one with that four versus three, right? Because even the three, if you put Shobber Slide back, but even then it's more of a uh, four versus two, right? Because usually Shobber Slide would be even here. 
So then you'd have a front line of four. So Chelsea were really able to manipulate that. And again, early on, doing it literally from the get-go, second half, bang, straight into Casado. Can he face forward? Gravenberg's over here. Just perfect in terms of being able to receive the ball and attack that space. Madueke holding width. Neto, who was a brilliant sub. Um, everybody was calling out for it. I said it on Twitter as soon as it happened. Uh, as soon as the half ended, I said we need Neto on for Sancho. Nothing against Sancho. It wasn't the game for him. He kept slowing it down in these advanced areas. And if you're going to be, you need to attack those areas when you're at Anfield and you get the chances, especially when you're up against Trent, who actually had a good game defensively, has to be said. Uh, probably should have given away a penalty, as I said. But you have to give him the credit where it's due. Had some good defensive moments. But I think Neto is the correct sub in that instance. And here it is for the goal. Casado receiving the ball in that weak spot of the, the press, which is what I like to sort of call this, the soft spot. And when you're playing against a press, especially sort of as usually intense and well-drilled as Liverpool, you need to hit that soft spot. And in order to do that, you need to be brave with your pass selection and you need to have a clear idea of who's going to be the free man. And this game, it was Casado, and that was the game plan. Casado gets the ball, receives it, and he's able to feed Jackson, who scores the goal. Perfect. Up to this point, I'm so happy with the way the game, like I say, the press, the, the game plan and build up, everything of that nature. This moment changed, not changed my mind, and but th this is the only part of the game that really upset me, right? Because we've just taken the lead and you're at Anfield, uh, not the lead, sorry, you've just, you've just equalised, 1-1 one, one at Anfield. And this is the time to sort of pack up, use this momentum and just be clever for a few minutes and just weather that little bit of storm they're going to come straight back with and then get back to playing your game. You start setting the tempo again. But this is a poor decision from Reese. Again, there's subs warming up at this point. Reese is one of them. Uh, Reese is one of them that's going off. Labby is one that's going off. And it was Tossin that went off for Baddy Ashil, who, like I said, had a good game when he came on. Um, who was the other? It was Vega. So that Gusto went over to right back. And then Enzo for Labia. Again, no problem with those subs because the fitness issues of Lavia and Reese at the minute. So no, no worries about that. I'm, I'm happy that they're being managed. But again, this is just late. It's just poor. They're trying to hold that line. Another angle here. Trying to hold that line. You've got somebody's got to pick him up. And again, I do think Tossin is a bit closed off in this scenario, like considering sort of where he's trying to defend. But again, he is holding his line. Um, it's on Reese for me. I know he's sort of being cognizant of the line and he's trying to play these guys off, which they were. If Nunes takes that touch and he doesn't know somebody's arriving behind him and he takes the touch and it is offside, then fair play. He played the offside trap well. Someone's got to account for Curtis Jones. It, you can't, that can't go through as free as it does. And like I said, at this point in the game, and I keep saying, like I say, by the way, um, I've noticed it, but you can't allow that ball to go through unopposed. It, it can't happen, especially at this point in the game when it's so important to keep hold of that 1-1 draw. Here are the changes. Vega actually came on and sort of instantly it was Enzo a bit deeper, Vega in this high position. We saw that sort of switch a little bit as the game went on. Enzo ended up more in these positions again with Vega a bit deeper. Sometimes Enzo would drop deep. Casado even found his way a little bit higher. It sort of switched around between these three a little bit more. Sometimes all three of them again sort of in that 3-3-4. Three, three, uh, it changed quite a bit. I know it says 0-0 zero, zero, by the way. This is about the 7, this might have been the 60th minute. This is a really nice passage of play to sort of end this on. And I think one factor to mention is that there's less sort of images of this second half. And the reason for that is we did find a lot of things similar to um, to these, making our way into the soft spot. The final ball just wasn't there on a lot of occasions. And I think that it's those little lapses, not lapses, but those little little moments of quality that we needed in those moments they were just lacking. Palmer, poor game, like I said. Um, even Neto, when he came on, he had some bright sparks, but that final ball wasn't always there. We had a few chances to put it in from the uh, from the byline. Easily collected by Kelleher or put away from one of the defenders. And it's just, I think, a tiny bit more quality. I think the game plan was still perfect, even after their goal. I think we still managed to generate, not perfect, maybe we still managed to generate chances still managed to get into the positions to generate chances. And once you find these positions, it's then about decision-making. And this occasion, Pedro Neto, Enzo's actually made the right run away. 
he's drawn Gravenberg all the way out here. Pedro Neto has now got acres and he breezes past Trent into that area of the pitch. And now it's about decision making because again, Jones is all the way over here with Palmer. He's being sucked over to Palmer. And then as Neto hits into here, Jones is drawn towards the ball. Shopper side's coming back. Canate, I think this is, has come out to try and win the ball as well. And he, uh, Neto's gone past him. So you've got all this gravity around Neto. He's managed to find Palmer here. And again, this is where I'm coming back to about Palmer uh, and not hounding on him because if anybody deserves these moments at this point, it's him because of how good he's been. He has to play that ball for me. He really does. Has to play that ball. I think that's a brilliant chance to go to all there. And I understand that people are saying that he takes the shot and it's, he has a, every right to take the shot. He's in great form. He's You want the shot to fall to him. But that is so clear that the player here is going to be trying to come and sort of block the ball. And Madueke is in and he's scored some goals from this position. And it's Palmer. It, it's the same connections we've seen this season. For me, that ball has to go into Madueke. And I think that that can be a clear moment to go to all in this game. And again, I know there's 25 minutes between these, uh, but the chances came. There was a Vega header in the 92nd minute. And then there was this one, which was unfortunate. I don't think there's much to it. I think they attacked the box well. Three attacking, four in the box with Gravenberg dropping in. A few on the edge. Palmer sort of arriving as well. Neto puts in a good cross. And, and Kunku's unlucky not to get something a little tiny bit more on it at the back post or just arrive that second earlier. Nothing on Nkunku. I think it's just very unfortunate uh, that it drops in that way. But again, those those moments did arise in the game. And I do think that it came mainly from the game plan of Chelsea controlling the game, even if it was a little bit slower. But that was the plan to be slower. Because the minute you speed things up against Liverpool, you're asking for trouble. They're one of the best transition sides in the league. If you get into a game against them, like Chelsea did last season, in that 4-1 loss where it is end-to-end -end stuff, they will just pick you apart and beat you. So the way to beat Liverpool is to slow it down, manipulate them as you want them, which is what we did with getting Casado into the spaces and attacking the space with Jackson in behind, splitting their pivot. They did that really well. And I do just think that there was moments of madness for the, the penalty, which, again, I think Chelsea should have had a penalty as well. Uh, a poor defensive error for their second goal. And then a few other poor moments in attacking areas that cost Chelsea at least getting a point in this game. But you look at the data from the two games at Anfield last season, this season, night and day. You look at, and it's not all about possession. Like I say, there's territory. There is the amount of passes completed in all phases of the game. Short, long, medium. Uh, first phase, second phase, final third. These, All of these were improved. These were better areas and moments for Chelsea in this game. So I'm just going to leave it on that. I do think Chelsea did at least enough to get a point. I think with if you get a little bit more luck in that first half, which isn't going to happen at Anfield very often with the decision-making and things that happened in terms of the penalties, etc., then you can come away from this game with a win. I do think we were the better side in the game overall. I think Liverpool had a little bit more quality in those final moments. Salah was brilliant like in those areas at receiving the ball out wide. And holding on to the ball and then being able to turn in and get, like, he played a little Traveller pass. Lovely one. Uh, didn't quite come off. Uh, scored his penalty, of course. And it's just those moments from special players, as well as defensive moments in the box that mattered from Liverpool. And then, again, little mentality differences between Chelsea's goal and Liverpool's second goal and sort of that head loss in between that because I think there was a 10-15 minute period from when Chelsea scored till obviously their goal and then 10-15 minutes after that that Chelsea again they needed a little bit of time to adjust back into that game and that also happened against Palace in that 1-1 draw another game where I think Chelsea played really well but they had that lapse in between so it's and again another game against Palace where they stuck to the game plan incredibly well so I think these are important factors. I think Maresca is implementing those really high-level game plans and they're being executed well. And you can see how they would work and how they should have worked. But it was just unlucky in certain aspects and moments of the game, which is where you then come to the conclusion of Chelsea are evolving. Not everything's going to be perfect. There is so many areas that they can still improve. But it, for 
like I say, for me, to come away from this game, and this is going to be the, the closing statement for the video, to come away from this game and almost act like we didn't go toe to at least toe to toe. I think we did. I think we were better than Liverpool. That just I I don't understand what game people are watching if we are going to sit and pretend that we weren't fully in this game throughout and the the game plan wasn't spot on from Reska. So we're going to leave it there. Any questions you have down below, please do let me know. I'll probably do a tactics talk stream with the tactics board. Um, maybe get some of these images up again to talk over little bits and sort of explain my way through on like an hour long live stream where you can ask me questions, little bits like that. Like I say, leave the questions down below in the comments and I'll try to get around to them as well. I'm going to have a thread on Twitter talking about these moments as well so do go check that out please do leave a like as it really does help me out we'll be back on well we've got the streams coming but we'll also be back on friday with a review of this sort of type for the panathinaikos game and i'll see you guys in the next video